This video is gonna be a little bit more on the technical side, but I'm gonna show you how I'm managing the state for the new Potion dashboard. Um, so for all the different details and things on this preview page, all the settings, everything. Um, I'm kind of trying to refactor everything into one state so it's just all together, where before, kind of all these settings and different things were on different pages, different modals and pop-ups, and so all the state was held individually. Where now it's just, I'm trying to make it a lot simpler where everything's kind of held together. Um, if we jump into the code, you can kind of see, I used to be using Zustand, which is kind of a state, local state manager, and you kind of see how I had to, you kind of have to create all these like setters and getters and doing all this stuff, and it's kind of repetitive, and you kind of feel like you're just writing a lot of boilerplate kind of code. And so I wanted to get away from that, and as well as, like I was saying, kind of put everything together. And so what I did was I created this use live editor hook, and this uses something called use SWR. Now the cool thing about SWR is it first starts out giving, getting your default state from an endpoint. So we kind of, we hit an endpoint that just gives us all the data, and that has like the site settings data, all the pages data, and I'm just putting that all together and that object will be the first kind of version of the state. And then um, it kind of creates this mutate function where you can change the state locally, or you can call a mutate function that re-grabs the data from this endpoint after maybe you've updated that data on your backend. And so, yeah, it just makes it a lot simpler because I have this hook and everything goes through here. I made this mutate function where it will mutate parts of that state um, based on the objects that I pass in. And so then like any, any data that I want to mutate this state, I just pass it this function, pass like the little object that I want to change, and then it just kind of works. So it, it, it takes away a lot of duplicating code as well. So like if we go over here to where I'm actually using it, um, you can see I, I got the hook right here. It has the mutate, it gets the site data, gets the page data. And then right here, when I change this input field, it just calls mutate, I'm telling it, I'm gonna change the pages and I want to change the user created URL to be the value of that input. And so this is just the one object. And when I call that mutate function, it just updates the state everywhere. So everywhere locally where I try to get this new state, um, I'll have it. And so yeah, it's, it's going pretty well. I'm kind of continuing to update all the input fields to mutate the, the states correctly. And I think it would just be a lot simpler and a lot easier to kind of manage in the future if I need to come back here and, and add some more fields, add some more settings. I'm not gonna have to kind of add a ton of stuff um, like I used to with Dustin. So hopefully kind of seeing this setup, how I'm, how I'm managing my state, um, is helpful and also just kind of seeing how SWR works. Um, it's, it's really cool in that you can make it revalidate, meaning it re-grabs the freshest data whenever they come back to the screen or maybe on an interval you can do that. And so there's just a lot of things you can do that makes it real easy when you connect your backend state to your front end state with SWR. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts about this and uh, I'll see you in another one.